What's happening, what everyone? What is up, guys? Welcome. Bourbon time. Bourbon time. Lots of bourbon reviews lately, Mikey. Not just any bourbon. A little special. BTAC Eagle Rare 17. Landing one of these bottles is like, you know, hitting the lottery. Um, yes, sir. These are not easy to get. They're extremely rare. You guys already know how hard it is to find BTAC bottles, how hard it is to, to you know, to be able to purchase one and the aftermarket on these is just absolutely insane. Eagle Rare 17, but this particular one is actually an 18? Yes, it's actually over 18 years old, but they keep the same marketing labeling, Eagle Rare 17. This is the summer 2020 release, of course, the latest one. The latest one, 2020 release, forgot to mention that. Yeah. Bottled at 50.5% ABV. Yes, so what is cool is that for a long time, they were only bottling it at 90 proof. The last two years, I believe, two releases, now it's 101 proof. So at least you're getting a little more because they do say that Eagle Rare 17, which is uh, Buffalo Trace, mash bill number one, between five and 8% rye, the evaporation rate on these barrels is insane. It's like 90% to 95% angel share. So that's why they always do uh, not unfiltered, but at least you get a little more proof now. Holding a BTAC bottle, we were just talking about this, right? Oh, the, like the marketing, the is nuts. holding a bottle is like it, I've yeah. I've held bottles that are over a hundred grand, like Lalique McCann McCallan sixty five oh, yeah, yeah. in my hands, and of yeah. course that's that's special, but there's something about just the, the about simplicity it, along with the weight about uh, with a BTAC bottle and just this like bottom part, that's like the, the heaviness. There's something really, really like perfect about it. Yeah, it really just. The bottle itself is perfect. Retailing for a hundred bucks. Well, imagine if you can get all of them for a hundred dollars. Yeah, I mean they retail <laughs> for a hundred bucks, and so many bourbons come out for two, three, three hundred dollars for a bourbon nowadays seems like kind of a normal thing. Yeah, and it's not even like you know it's kind of like bunch bunch of places are doing it, and uh, you always got to remember these retail at a hundred is something to compare it to, yeah. right? The Eagle Rare 17, the William Ruler Weller, and the but it's so impossible to find at a hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah, you know, most people have to pay much, much, much higher than that. And this thing usually on the secondary goes for over a thousand bucks. So Yeah, I mean, you know, everyone everyone debates over obviously the bourbon secondary market is a huge issue. A lot of people say maybe Buffalo Trace should charge more for these guys to at least prevent some of that. But really, it's all about the distributors playing their games, making you buy like 20 cases of some shit you can't sell, you don't want to get a few of these bottles. So I, I really don't fault Buffalo Trace that much. It's yeah. Still, it's, it's, it's $100 still. To me, it's all about the distributors being assholes, playing their games. They're definitely playing the games. It's such some, a value at $100. There needs to be some, something needs to change for that to stop because, yeah. you know, I, I, I talked to a couple, couple uh, shop owners that are like connected. I'm talking about Albert. Yeah. He he can't get this bottle this year. If he can't get that, that's insane. Yeah. He can't get an eagle. I mean, he's getting the rest, but right. he couldn't get he couldn't get an eagle. At least so far he hasn't gotten one. That's insane. Um man. and 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 the this fact guy pushes amount, crazy products. Yeah, I mean the amount of money he has to spend on other products to oh, even bullshit. get any B tac. That's crazy. So he does charge a premium for them. He doesn't give them out at retail. And part of me wants to say what the hell? You're part of the problem. Why are you doing this? This right. and this. But the other part of me is like, dude, I have to spend twenty grand on other stuff to be able to sell this bottle for a grand. That's what I'm saying. I I don't fault him either. I yeah. Fault, I fault, well, what do you I want fault, him to do? He's got to make a living. Guys. Yeah. I fault the distributors. Yeah. Yeah. He has no choice. Yeah. Anyways, Anyways. equal rare seventeen here. These twenty twenty release. Fucking a. Why not? It's. It's got a lovely uh, bourbony candied note. It's got it's got high quality like maple syrup, pancakes, crepes, powdered sugar, um, high quality like cherries, black cherries, rich, rich caramels, beautiful light hints of like oak play. Um, sweet pipe tobacco, not like cigar, but like that very sweet, sweet oh, pipe yeah. tobacco. Oh, yeah. Red licorice. Lots of red licorice. And um, what oh, are yeah. those cinnamon candies called? 
hot tots, hot, what are they? Red hots? Red hots. Red hots, oh yeah. Some red hots. I get, I get this wonderful combination. We talked about it before. One of our favorite things about the Four Roses, small batch, limited editions every year, is the way they do the deep like apricots and peaches. And then George T. Stagg, we talk about, it's that dark cherry chocolate cola. I get this unique combination of, not as amped up as those, but a kind, of, kind of a combination of both. Like maybe like a medium level of both. But then I get this like from the 17 years age, almost like sweet oak candy. It's definitely candy, but I get this deep, rich, sweet, like actual oak candy combining with all those things. There's also, there's dried figs, there's dark plums, but that's the biggest thing I get and it's got its own unique thing. Like I said, mashed bill one, same as stag, but where they age the barrels in the warehouses, that's what it's all about, how they create the different flavors because it's totally different than stag. Very different. But that's what, uh, and like that, that unique candy, man. I can't like name it. It's got its own thing, but it's so addictive. The red licorice, man. It's black cherries and the red licorice for no, me. The red, that's a good call. The red licorice, yeah, it's explosive. Yeah. It's a great call, man. Palette? Palette. The age really comes through and it's never too oaky. It's a perfectly aged bourbon. I love the sweet pipe tobacco note. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Black cherries, the red licorice again. Mm -hmm. Rich maple syrup, crepes. Cinnamon candies coming through again, very similar. Mm -hmm. um, I'd add a little- uh, Like hot tamales. Yeah. Red I'd, hot. I'd, um, no. I'd add a little, you, um, the age just kind of shows a little bit on the pal in the back, a little bit of leather. Oh yeah. A little bit of fresh, fresh leather. And you called it, man. The nose is pure, like beautifully sweet pipe tobacco. But on the palate, the age kind of goes a little more toward like full blown Cuban cigar smoke. Yeah. This is, um, this is nice. This is very nice. Um, I don't like it when <laughs> for like passionate bourbon people always want like 70% ABV. Give me more, 75, even more, even more. Yeah, yeah. Bring always, it up, 150. Yeah, every, I, uh, like the 2019 stag where a lot of people felt like it was too light. I don't know what it was bottled at, like 57% or something. Yeah. Um, was like, that what, was, that what, was what one of my, I, we loved it. We were alone in that. Most people didn't love it. Right. So we were very alone. So I don't want to be that guy that says this needs more ABV, but it it does bourbon for some no, but reason. No, but this is not uncut, so. This is it not does. uncut. It does. It is asking for a little bit more yeah. fullness. It's very good, but you're like, you can tell it's been watered down. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, because the stag was still cast barrel right. strength. And, the, the, and like I said, the evaporation rate on this guy. Yeah. Wherever they store it is so insane that if they did it uncut, there might be like a hundred bottles every you year. Could just <laughs> tell, you could just tell you were gonna, it's gonna, it was gonna get antique -y and just richer and dustier and, and it was just gonna add that, that extra, extra wow factor yeah. to it, bumping it up. I like, mean, if this like was- Ancient like bookstore dust and shit. Yeah. No, if this were uncut, this would dominate. And, and you know how bourbon is dominate. when you water it down, the sweetness gets kind of, kind of like gets different the sweetness right. level on barrel proof versus the sweetness level on um when you water it down it just becomes kind of it's weird it almost becomes too sweet right but this is not too sweet by the way this is very very good but i'm in the boat i'm trying not to be in that boat but i am in that boat where this just needs five more percent ABV. No. bring this up to 50, 55 percent 50 percent is good but it's asking for a little more. It really, yeah, because, it really is. What I, what I do love about this is because of the lack of ethanol, this is like a, a beautiful, elegant, delicate, like almost perfumey, like fragrant mm -hmm. bourbon mm -hmm. with all those notes. Mm -hmm. But, so it's kind of like a balancing thing, right? Where mm -hmm. that's kind of cool. But obviously, I think you're right. I mean, obviously if it were uncut, 
it would just bump it up to 17 years old to like an otherworldly level with the antique stuff. I totally agree. This is awesome. This is awesome. It's the only reason why I'm complaining. Yeah. No, it's but, because but it in, is a, awesome. in a way, though, it's kind of cool to me that, again, if you could get them all every year, you have this guy being a little lower, a little more delicate, got to kind yeah. of dig with it. Yeah. And the stack. Being Absolutely. the uncut monster, 15 years old, because they're both Nashville one, right? If you're, let's say, like a Blanton smooth kind of bourbon drinker, right? which a lot of people are, this would be the next level of yes. quality because it's much better, but it's still smooth, rich. It's got richness, but it's still just, you don't feel any ethanol. That's what it any. is, right? It's still, it's very rich. It's got a wonderful finish from the age. Like that, that like yeah. I said, that oak candy yeah. stays with me. For, oak candy, for yeah. minutes after, but... It's oak cherries and oak licorice, man. Oh, yeah. But the key Cherry is, candies. yeah, you don't get any of that off-putting ethanol burn that a lot of proof heads crave and need, you know? Mike, the finish is nice. Yeah, it's, the red licorice for sure. Yeah, it's got it's got a nice medium-length medium, medium length finish. Mike, to me, this is a bourbon that should be 91, but I'm going to give it an 89 because... Because it, I know this would be a 91 if it was foolproof. Right. Absolutely. And it's bringing it down to anywhere. I had it at an 88. I changed my mind. I'm bumping it up to an 89. It's right around that 88 and a half, 89 mark. It is very good. This is the reason why it's, I'm giving it the score I'm giving it. It's very, very, very good. It's just, it leaves you a little disappointed at the same time, right? Because it, it, you just know how incredible it could be. And, and, and fairly, like you were saying, if it were barrel proof, because of the angel share for this guy, you would, this bottle, there would only be a couple bottles. There wouldn't be many bottles. Well, it'd be like a $5,000 bottle to get. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be yeah, exactly. 10, yeah. yeah. It, but you wouldn't be very many. So, so because of that, Afraid. they kind of, they kind of have to uh, water it down a little bit, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but but how do you feel about it? I think you're, you're scoring it a little bit better than better me, right? than ninety proof though. Yes, because I, I had yes. I had this bad boy. I had I think the two thousand. I see the picture the two thousand seventeen release. I think at a bar the ninety proof, and you definitely appreciate the difference. Yeah, but no, I do. Everything you said is for sure true, but I'm gonna bump it up one to a ninety. Yeah, but you are right though. Obviously, yeah, yeah. it would be like otherworldly. Yeah, if because it were, if it were uncut, because on the finish, I am not right now. So I just finished my sip. However long ago it was, it's not much, much going on right now on the finish. So the finish is is, is not like a super long finish, which you are getting with the William Leroux Wellers and the right. Stags. Um, you and are that, getting that like creamy, lasting mouthfeel and everything. Correct. You of course correct. lose that, right? Correct. Uh, but again, I think there's a time and place. For all kinds of whiskeys, I think the 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 whiskeys yeah. that don't have that the smooth whiskeys, the mm -hmm. quote unquote smooth, the forbidden word. I don't have an issue with the word, but a lot of people do. Um, the quote unquote smooth whiskeys, there's a place for them. Um, there's there's a, there's there's a time where I I'm not looking for it ultra rich. I, I don't always want ultra rich. I don't always want. You know, uh, a creamy Caesar salad. Sometimes I just want a little lemon juice on right. some lettuce with a couple drops of olive oil, right? Yeah. Sometimes I want something something silkier and smoother. Um, so there's a, definitely a place, but in the ultimate world, this this at Barrel Proof would just be a fantastic. Mind blowing, room. yeah. And see, thinking about it, right? Everyone's different. Like what matters to you the most, nose, you know, first palate finish. I go back and forth. A lot of people say always finish. And that is true usually. But for some reason, this nose, the age, comes through. The age is like, like uh, Tom Ford Tobacco Vanille. It's like so perfumey and cologne -y. And just that, that unique, like, kind of, kind of, I guess not like a crazy wow factor, but different wow factor for me. It's what bumps it up to a 90. So it just yeah. depends on it's special. Your, your mood of the day, what you're into. It's definitely but special. No, I mean, obviously, I agree with you that, yeah, it's yeah. had that, that coating mouthfeel. Yeah. That, that never-ending finish? Yeah. yeah, it would be next Let's, level. 
Let's have the 2020 George T. Stag next, huh? Let's fucking do it. <laughs> Cheers. Right, Cheers. Hint of what's coming up soon. We'll see you guys soon for many more reviews. Take care.